Hurricane Aaron, a meteorologist's in-depth analysis of a historic Atlantic storm. Good evening, as a meteorologist who has spent more than a decade studying tropical systems. I can say with certainty that Hurricane Aaron is a storm that will be remembered for years to come. It is not just another hurricane in the Atlantic. It is a powerful, rapidly evolving system that highlights the volatility of today's climate and the urgent need for preparedness across the Caribbean, the United States, and Canada. On Sunday, August 17, 2025, Aaron has reached sustained winds of 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers per hour, making it a strong Category 4 hurricane, teetering on the edge of Category 5 intensity. Its central pressure has plunged to remarkably low levels, signaling that the storm is extremely well organized and dangerously intense. What makes this situation even more concerning is that Aaron is currently undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle, a process where the inner eyewall collapses and a new, larger one forms. This transition usually results in short-term fluctuations in strength, but once complete, it often leads to a broader, more powerful storm. That means Aaron is poised to re-strengthen and expand in size, impacting an even wider area. Current situation in the Caribbean. Right now, Aaron's influence is being felt across the northeastern Caribbean, Puerto Rico, the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, and parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti are experiencing heavy rains, gusty winds, and intermittent power outages as outer rain bands sweep across. Reports of localized flooding have already come in, and the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola raises the risk of mudslides and landslides. Farther north, the Turks and Caicos Islands and the southern Bahamas are bracing for tropical storm force winds of up to 50 miles per hour, 80 km per hour, and rainfall totals of 100 mm, 4 inches, or more over the next 24 to 36 hours. Even though the core of the storm is expected to stay just offshore, the size of Aaron means that these islands will not escape the impact. Rough seas, storm surge flooding in vulnerable coastal zones, and interruptions to transport and utilities are likely. Why Aaron is so strong? The scientific explanation behind Aaron's explosive growth lies in ocean heat content. The waters beneath the hurricane are not only warm at the surface but also warm at depth. This means Aaron can continue to pull vast amounts of energy from the ocean fueling its circulation. The deeper the layer of warm water, the less likely upwelling of cooler water will weaken the storm. This is why we've seen Aaron intensify so dramatically in just a matter of days. Atmospheric conditions are also favorable. Wind shear, the change in wind speed and direction with height in the atmosphere, is currently low. Dry air, which often disrupts hurricanes, has been minimal in Aaron's environment. The combination of warm waters and a supportive atmosphere is textbook fuel for rapid intensification. The forecast track. Looking ahead, computer models agree on the general path Aaron will take. The hurricane will continue to move northwestward, eventually curving more toward the north as it feels the influence of a high-pressure ridge to the east and a deep trough of low pressure over Canada. This pattern will steer Aaron on a course that parallels the U.S. east coast keeping the storm offshore for now but close enough to pose significant risks. Early in the week, Aaron will pass near the Turks and Caicos and the southern Bahamas, delivering tropical storm conditions. By midweek, it will track east of the outer banks of North Carolina and west of Bermuda. While the hurricane force core may remain over open water, outer rain bands could still bring squalls, gusty winds, and coastal flooding to eastern North Carolina. By late week into the weekend, Aaron will turn toward the northeast, approaching Atlantic Canada. The most likely landfall scenario involves the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland, though impacts may extend across Nova Scotia and surrounding provinces. Impacts in the United States. Even without a direct landfall, Aaron poses several threats to the eastern seaboard of the United States. The storm's enormous wind field and powerful ocean swells will create life-threatening surf and rip currents along beaches from Florida to New England. This will have implications for tourism, fishing, and coastal safety. The outer banks of North Carolina are particularly vulnerable. The narrow barrier islands are prone to overwash and erosion, 
and with Aaron passing just offshore, even indirect effects could cause serious damage. Outer rain bands may sweep across eastern North Carolina, bringing localized flooding, gusty winds, and scattered power outages. Farther north, states like Virginia, Maryland, and even Massachusetts may also experience hazardous seas, dangerous currents, and scattered heavy showers depending on Aaron's exact trajectory. Impacts in Canada As Aaron curves northeastward, it will eventually threaten Atlantic Canada, particularly Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. While the storm may weaken slightly as it moves into cooler waters, it will likely remain a powerful system capable of causing significant damage. Rainfall totals in parts of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland could reach 100 to 150 millimeters, 4 to 6 inches, enough to trigger flooding in urban areas and landslides in rural terrain. Strong coastal winds may reach hurricane force gusts in exposed areas, especially along the Avalon Peninsula. This raises the risk of power outages and damage to infrastructure. High seas and storm surge could disrupt shipping and the fishing industry which are vital to the economy in this region. Coastal flooding and erosion are also possible. The bigger picture, other tropical waves. Meteorologists are also watching the Atlantic Basin closely because Aaron may not be the only storm in play this season. New tropical disturbances are emerging near the Cabo Verde Islands off the coast of Africa. Several forecast models suggest these waves could develop into tropical storms or hurricanes in the coming days. This is not unusual for August, which is when the Atlantic typically enters its most active phase. However, it underscores that the 2025 hurricane season has only just begun. Preparedness and safety guidance. For those in the path or near the projected track of Aaron. Preparedness is essential. Caribbean residents, especially in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas, should secure homes, stock up on essentials such as food, water, and medicine, and have evacuation plans ready. Mariners should remain in port until conditions improve. U.S. coastal residents from Florida through the Carolinas should closely monitor official updates from the National Hurricane Center. Even if Aaron remains offshore, indirect impacts like rip currents, flooding, and coastal erosion could be dangerous. Atlantic Canada should begin early preparations now. Communities in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland need to plan for heavy rainfall, strong winds, and possible power disruptions by the weekend. Authorities should ready shelters and emergency resources in anticipation of the storm's arrival. A historic storm in context. Aaron's intensity this early in the season places it among the strongest hurricanes ever recorded in mid-August. Such storms are rare, and their increasing frequency raises questions about the influence of climate change. Warmer seas and altered atmospheric patterns appear to be contributing to more rapid intensification events. As Aaron has clearly demonstrated, this storm is a powerful reminder of how quickly conditions can escalate in the tropics. What began as a modest system just days ago has now become a life-threatening hurricane affecting millions across multiple countries. Conclusion. Hurricane Aaron is not just another entry in the record books, it is a wake-up call. For the Caribbean, the storm is already bringing destructive rains and winds. For the United States, the next week is critical as Aaron tracks dangerously close to the coastline, sending huge waves ashore and threatening coastal communities. And for Canada, the weekend looms with the possibility of direct impacts in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. The story of Aaron is still unfolding. But one thing is clear. This is a storm of historic proportions. Communities across the region must take the threat seriously, follow official guidance, and prepare for the impacts that are certain to come. As meteorologists, our role is to provide the clearest information possible. But the responsibility for safety lies with each household and each community. Preparation today can make the difference between resilience and disaster tomorrow. Stay alert, stay prepared, and stay safe.